Hello everyone, uh, this is Lorenzo and um, I'm going to be doing a presentation and a lecture series um, merely on the um, reproductive system. Um, so let me start with the male reproductive system. So what I want to do is provide this little graph that I have here that I want you all to look and uh, observe. Basically what you need to know in this graph is that the GnRH this is uh, the preoptic region we have to take into consideration. This secretes um, in impulses, so it goes to the anterior pituitary and produces the, the LH, which is the luteinizing hormone, and the FSH, which is the, which is the, um, the FSH, follicle uh, secreting hormone. And uh, there is a pulsatile release that prevents downregulation of the receptors, so take this into consideration. The LH, the FSH, and the, T and the TSH, and the human chorionic gonadotropin which are all glycoproteins. They're water-soluble, and they all have very long half-life. So basically, uh, the alpha subunits are the same. They differ in the beta subunits in that they provide specificity and activity. So remember that the LH has only one target tissue. It's the Leydig cells. So um, the Leydig cells are uh, testosterone required for normal sertoli cell function. And, uh, and eventually for normal spermatogenesis, which is the creation of the sperm. Now, in peripheral tissue, testosterone is converted to di dihydrotestosterone, which is a more active form, via the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Now, note that under normal adult male, the circulating testosterone is a negative feedback loop for the um, LH. But under normal conditions, testosterone is not for FSH. So, um, remember, testosterone affects the Leydig cells, and this is the role of the, uh, this is the, role, of the role of the LH. The inhibin, which is secreted by the Sertoli cells, inhibits the FSH. <clears throat> so, what I want you to know is that um, just to review again, because remember the most important thing when you're reviewing is to continuously reiterate the, the meaning. Um, and the particular process. This is high yield, actually, for those studying for the medical boards. So this is for you guys. Um, the GnRH is synthesized in, pre in the preoptic region of the hypothalamus and secreted in the pulses, in pulse-like matter, into the hypophysial portal vessels. So you notice that in this graph, the GnRH is secreted. Okay, This, pr this produces the pulsatile release of LH and FSH. Now, um, the pulsatile release of GnRH prevents downregulation of its receptors in the anterior pituitary. So therefore, it's an evolutionary trait that has a pulsatile motion uh, release. So just note that LH will then activate the Leydig cell uh, to form cholesterol, and then from there, it produces testosterone. Testosterone is then going to be sent into the blood. From there, it has a negative feedback control in, in uh, inhibiting excess amounts of luteinizing hormone. Okay? Testosterone is also sent into some peripheral tissues for, uh, where it is broken down by 5 alpha reductase and produces dihydrotestosterone, which is basically testosterone but a more active form of testosterone. Now, one of the products of GnRH is FSH. FSH then activates the Sertoli cells, which um, basically uh, produces inhibin. Okay? Uh, this inhibin basically inhibits excess FSH as a negative feedback. So just remember, Sertoli cells inhibits uh, the production, uh, the, inhibits the production of excess FSH. So that's basically what you need to remember. Remember, normally the concentration of testosterone in the testes is 5, 50 times that of the blood. There's 50 times more testosterone in the testes than they're in the circulate than they're circulating in the blood. Note that FSH and the Leydig cell testosterone are required for normal spermatogenesis. So what is required for normal spermatogenesis? What is required for normal creation of sperm and proliferation of the race? It is FSH and Leydig cell testosterone. So that's all you have to basically keep in consideration. And uh, here I have provided you guys an excellent table. Excellent table. This is high yield for the boards and for you that are medical residents or medical physicians that um, have already forgotten your uh, male reproductive system and its uh, and hormones there. So, for primary hypogonadism, there is no secretion of hormone. Okay? Um, sex steroids is decreased 
there is an increase in LH due to no, due to the lack of negative feedback. There is a decrease. There is an increase in FSH. For pituitary hypogonadism, which is secondary, okay, there is no LH, no FSH. There's a decrease in sex steroids, decrease in LH, and a decrease in FSH. For postmenopausal women, basically the ovaries has no follicle. There's a decrease in estrogen, increase in LH, increase in FSH. Now, for anabolic steroid therapy, which is in males, um, basically they're taking methotestosterone, there is an increase in testosterone, there is a decrease in LH due to the lack of stimulus for the Leddig, and there's also a decrease in FSH. Now, for inhibited infusion, in case of males, uh, this affects the Sertoli cell, there's no change in sex steroids, there's no change in LH levels, there's, though there is a decrease in FSH. Now, for GnRH infusion, which is a, which is occurs in, in, uh, in via constant rate, there's a decrease in sex steroids, there's a decrease in LH, and um, there's also a decrease in FSH. Now, for GnRH infusion, which is basically, uh, as I told you before, it's uh, via a pulsatile motion, there's an increase in sex steroids, increase in LH, and increase in FSH. So basically, just remember, um, uh, decrease in LH removes stimulus for lytic cells. Remember that and uh, leddig cell atrophy, but therefore there's no local production of testosterone, which is inherently required for spermatogenesis, and decrease in spermatogenesis, therefore decrease in infertility. there's an uh, increase in, in, in rates of infertility. Um, basically, just remember, GnRH is pulsatile, prevents down regulation, therefore, because it's pulsatile, it prevents down regulation, and chronically high level of both LH and FSH. So these are the pathologies relating the um, hormones, sex hormones in men, um, I want you guys to basically keep in mind that, um, you know, whenever it involves, um, whenever it involves infusion, uh, there will always be a, a decrease in FSH, okay? Uh, we see this in, um, anabolic steroid therapy infusion, inhibit infusion, and even in GnRH infusion, okay? Remember that the three things that it's common is that the FSH levels decrease. Um, so that ends this lecture. I'm going to do the female reproductive system in a bit, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll learn and learn. Remember, learning is to be enlightened. God bless. Cheers. Bye.